But I can't tell you how many <laughs> questions there are about your balls. About how do you sit down? How do you ride with big balls? How does it feel to have massive balls? Um, how do you sit down? These are all. <laughs> there's another. How do you sit down? Uh, is there is there something is there something behind this story or is this just literally from doing a flip I, that big people instantly think about balls? This episode of The Ride Companion is brought to you by Crankworks. It's race season. That's right, Davey. Crankworks Rotorua returns March 16th to 24th, celebrating 10 years of Crankworks Rotorua. Since then, it's played host to some of the most memorable moments in Crankworks history and is now referred to as the soul of Crankworks. So, what can we expect from Crankworks Rotorua 2024 and how can we watch and play along? Well, Ollie... The RockShox Tanifar DH will take place on March the 18th and the event is free to spectate. Hey, this could be a little teaser into who's on form for 2024. Of course, you'll have Rob Warner on the commentary too. Rob Ski. The festival of all things biking continues at Skyline Rotorua March 20th to 24th with the Maxis Slope Style in memory of Magaza taking place on Sunday, March the 24th. The big question is, can anybody stop Emil Johansson? Can today's guest, Tom Eisted, improve on his third place at Joyride? And can Max Fredrickson slide onto the podium? Mate, for 2024, there's also equal prize money across the SWC women's and SWC men's categories with more than 500,000 Canadian dollars to be given out during the 2024 Crankworks World Tour and SWC. Similarly, the Triple Crown of Slopestyle will be rewarded to any rider who wins three Crankworks Slopestyle events in a single season with a value of $25,000 per crown. Further to that, winners in both men's and women's categories of Red Bull Joyride at Crankworks Whistler are granted lifetime entry to Crankworks Slope Style events. Ollie, Rotary is a long way, mate, but I really want to watch and play along. How do I do it? Well, if you can't make it to the festival itself, catch all the action live on Red Bull TV or follow at Crankworks Rotary and at Crankworks on Instagram for course previews, daily highlights, and photo recaps of all the best action daily from Crankworks Rotorua. And don't forget, if you want to take your fandom to the next level and have some horses in the events, you can also head to theracecompanion.com and play our fantasy downhill and slope style games where you could be in with a chance of winning some epic prizes. That's right. If you're looking to get amongst the action, festival passes are still available for purchase at crankworks.com forward slash Rotorua. Hey, love to be at the head of the game. Crankworks Cairns tickets are also now on sale. Mate, hype for it. Hype Miss for something it. or need some more info? Crankworks.com has everything you need. All right, so, so let's get into this episode of The Ride Companion with Tom Eisted, and I'm going to mysteriously disappear. Can I click you out? Yeah, go on then. Straight off the plane from Darkfest, the world's sixth seeded free ride MTB rider. Yeah, correct. The UK's number one free rider. Well, you can take that. Take that. Take that. Take that. The world of slope style, yeah. Cornwall's def- definitely Cornwall's finest. I'd like to think so. Yeah. <laughs> Above pasties. Pasties nah, in second. Nah, pasties are always going to be number one. Tom Eisted, Ice T. We're all here for it. You already knew it. It was already in the title. That's the thing. You know, when you do the intro, it's already in the title. Oh, yeah. How are you, dude? Tired, surprisingly. Yeah. Literally landed back from Darkfest two hours ago. Big week, that, no? Long week, yeah. Long week. I tell you one thing though, your hair doesn't look bad for it. I definitely got off with the best one of the bunch, I think. <laughs> you actually look ready for business. You look ready for this Oprah nah, style talk show. It's for all Peaky Blinders is what I've gone for. Yeah, that's nice though, yeah, isn't it? I can get away with it. It's kind yeah. of not far away from what I would normally have anyway. So I think I honestly good. think it looks neat. Thank you. Rarely people come away with... Well, last year was just terrible. It took nine months to grow out and I had to do two weddings and that went down really well. <laughs> what was last year's one? I had like just the front bit left on my head and it was dyed bleach blonde. That was quite funny <laughs> doing like BBC News interviews and stuff with that <laughs> on my head. <laughs> oh no. How did you get away with this year? What's the plan? Just sort of... How do you mean? Do you like fade into the background somehow? No, How you did you do like, it during you go, the... You go in early. Okay, you go in yeah, early. Yeah, and go, yeah, yeah. I just want this little bit. And then people get more and more hyped up and more... Bo- get more and more drunk yeah and then yeah the more ridiculous ones come out i'm sure there's many things you've learned from dark fest doing it yeah. over the years yeah definitely just you've got to be sneaky with it sometimes 
I, uh, I actually wanted to steer away from Darkfest because we've got so much to talk about uh, with Darkfest and it's like too easy to just talk for hours. But so you're on your way back now to Cornwall. Yep. What a strange commute. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's not the best. How's how has it worked out like this? What how has it worked out that you're a pro free rider doing the biggest jumps in the world, but you're from Cornwall, right? You're from Cornwall. Yep. Born yeah. and bred, lived there my whole life. Um it's it isn't the best commute in the world to get to the airport and out, but <laughs> yeah. it's still not that bad. Like nah. I do it maybe maximum once a month. Yeah. And it's four hours. Yeah. But then I go I end up in Cornwall when I go home. And who doesn't want to live in Cornwall, really? It's really nice so so you've always the lived there yeah, yeah. where where we, where whereabouts i live in liscard so it's about 20 minutes from plymouth so just just into cornwall so, so that's north cornwall no south east cornwall so oh, right south east yeah south east naughty elephants you have to do elephant no, no. so it's on the bottom bottom okay. right hand corner okay okay cool and you've always lived there yep and bikes yeah. bikes yeah bmx to mountain bike to anything really on two wheels yeah, see, I first heard your name through BMX. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was only six years ago. I was still competing in that. Yeah. Six years ago? Six or seven years ago. Six Not or that seven long years ago. ago. So, you're a kid in Liscard. Yeah. What, what, what is there to do in Liscard? Nothing. The only good thing in Liscard is the train to Plymouth. That is literally what I've said at every interview I've ever done, because it is true. It's a proper miners town from... When we had all the like tin mines in Cornwall. Oh, is it? Yeah, so it's all it's all re- like the architecture in the town's amazing. It's all really old. Like my parents' old house was like from the eighteen twenties. Like yeah, it, beautiful house. But it's just such a dead end town now. There's not really anything going on. There's nothing really for people to do. There's no factories. There's no real nothing so to go and do. Is it heavily tourist for like super touristy? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I lived in a nice a bit of it, and there was a skate park across the road, and I spent every day there. So that's where do you, I often think people come. People who come from places where there's less going on often end up more obsessed with their like sport and stuff. Yeah, I think it's just that you, you when you go somewhere to do like you go from somewhere rubbish to somewhere better, you try and take every opportunity of that. Yeah, and like push yourself while you're there. Yeah, and if you live on the doorstep of it, it's like oh, I stay. I'll go do that. It's like imagine living in London. You're not going to go and do the like the um, London Eye. No, it's like why would I do that? It's a tourist attraction. Like you're not. Probably ever. That's yeah. the weird thing. So you actually end up like counting yourself out of things in a way, wouldn't yeah. you? I don't know. Yeah, it's an interesting thought. And I definitely reckon that, that helps with biking because you like make the most out of every journey you do. You make most out of every session yeah. you do if it doesn't happen. So like the, I was, the, I'd get on the train and go down to the track down at Portreath when I was on BMX as well because I'd do it all there. And that's an hour and I was doing that every weekend. Yeah. So I'd go do that or go down to Mount Hawk every weekend and... Just that was the godsend for me was the train line. So you've got your you've got your skate park over the road. Yeah, which was tiny, absolutely smallest thing in the world. See, it's still like like your commute to Darkfest still seems less not clear when you think you're starting <laughs> with a when you think you're starting with a, a skate park. What yeah. sort of what sort size quarters are we talking? Oh, I was like here? A four foot quarter pipe was the biggest. So you're going there. from four foot quarter pipe, but I said I know you're not. This is a big. I'm, big being, I'm being silly, yeah, but yeah. like a four foot quarter pipe can take you to 120 foot. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very like, you got to find your lane quite quickly and look right. at what you're doing. Let's talk. What, so, what was the next lane then? Four foot quarter pipe, then on the train to Plymouth. Yeah, on Plymouth, then there's more skate park stuff. And then I was competing, doing like NAS Festival. And then yeah. I got hooked up by Mongoose back in the day. So, how old are you then? I would have been. I think I was 20 when I got hooked up by Mongoose. But I was at like nice. a few bike shops were cooking me up with free, like not free, but like trade prices on stuff. Yeah. The usual story for... BMX is good as well for it, isn't it? Because you can actually afford... The, the bike is less expensive, essentially. Oh, yeah. Like, especially back then. I feel like now a BMX and a jump bike are approximately the same price now, aren't they? Yeah, but the only thing, main difference is this: you got to buy forks. Yeah. Like, yeah. But they're going to be a thousand pounds, not 150 quid. That's the yeah. main difference. Like you can max out a BMX at two grand, really, if you go mad and buy titanium everything for it. Yeah. But did you? N- I did at one point because I had my bike stolen out of my garden. Yeah. And the insurance willing to pay nice. up. So like, cool. And got a nice... We're going titanium. Yeah. Make a difference? 
Nope, made no difference. Bro- broke it in. Broke all. I got like titanium spokes and everything. And they lasted yeah. like three sessions and I snapped them all. Really? <laughs> there you go. So you're doing contests at this stage. So I guess you're like... Th- th- this all sort of makes sense going towards slope style, doesn't it? Mm. So I'm going to like the, the, like the FMB, not the FMB, the fees events, which like the ones in, they had them in Montpellier. Yeah. All, yeah. Over, all, over, all over the place. They're now like the Olympic like started programs. And uh, I would right, yeah. always get like, I'd get to finals, but I'll be like the first guy to drop in and it'll be. It'll and be just it, to be clear, this is Park. Yeah, BMX Park. I'd See, go, again, the commute. Is yeah. long, <laughs> yeah, and, and odd because like I grew up just in the woods, <laughs> never in a park, so it it, uh, it it like seems way more different to me. Yeah, like, it's, 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 cool. it's still bikes, isn't it? It's not much different. It's still bikes. Just it's no, just, you're right. You're in just two different lanes, and at some point, I yeah. managed to merge and cross over. But yeah, it was more the fact that at the fees events, I used to have slope style, right. especially Montpellier. Like we we had the park contest, and you look across, and I'd have the mega ramp into stuff, and you'd see like Adolf Silver and all those boys still yeah sending themselves. And luckily, I was on Mongoose, and they're like, well, do you want a dirt jump bike? Do you want to try it? And I was like, yeah. That's, that's how it right. happened, yeah. yeah. Mongoose was like, well, if you want one, you can try it. Sent me one. I went to the Dirt Wars events, and, like, the first one I went to, like, Matt Jones was there, Cardi was there, Freddie Pullman, and that was there. And I literally was just behind them on my yeah. first comp. I'm like, all right, we'll give it another go. Because I was doing well in the BMX comps, Fees let me have a wild card spot into the mountain bike thing at the gold event. And I literally, first event, I po- like got top 10 at gold. And like I actually beat like the whole Mongoose team at the time. Wow, there you go, yeah. And then they were like, do you just want to keep keep yeah. doing that? And I was like, see how far it goes. I kept trying to do both for a couple of years, and it just was just a nightmare switching between bikes for doing all that. How would it differ like a comp run in a skate park? It's more the practice that's a nightmare. Is it? Yeah. So when I was doing it, like fees, they wouldn't have like, now they do it in groups. So you get like an hour on course and there'd be like 20 people. Before it was just courses open, 400 people on course. Yeah. And it was just like, there was crashes left on some people getting T-boned, like you're like ducking because people are jumping over you the whole time. It just wasn't very fun. Yeah. When you go to a, like a mountain bike comp and it's a straight line. So you literally, if he's made the first jump, second jump, okay, I can drop in. Yeah. He has crashed at the end. Someone's going to shout and you're going to get out of the way. And ultimately, it's still about putting together a run. Yeah. It's still about, it doesn't matter whether it's in a circle yeah. and going in and out or going just down it's, a it's, course. They're now about the same sort of time frame as well. Like like yeah. the, um, like Joyride this year was like 45 seconds, I think, top to bottom. And like, Man. I think Fees is, I think it's 45 or like 60 seconds maybe. It's like they're not far off. Mate, how interesting is that? Yeah. I've never even thought of that. Th- yeah. We're doing a lot more of like maybe coasting around berms and stuff when they're just filling as many airs yeah. and bar spins and tail ups as they can into a run. And on flat, I guess you're like pumping a lot. So yeah, yeah. What, do, you, do you watch any of the Olympic? Yeah, because I know all the boys still. So yeah. I, like, I know Declan Brooks really well still. Yeah. I still chat to Declan and I know Kieran quite well. Yeah. So I chat to those boys from time to time. I'm trying to bully Declan to come down and ride the airbag, but he's not having it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess it does just cross over straight away, doesn't it? Yeah, it's similar. You just have to get used to the wheel size. Yeah. Like, I buzz my ass so many times. Really? Just getting used to the extra 26 inches. What, when you were first swapping over? Yeah. There you go. So then you just had success in mountain biking, and to you, it's the same thing. It's just two wheels. Yeah, yeah. That's that's how I try to treat it. Just two wheels, just going to see how this... See, now the commute feels a little bit closer to me now. (laughs) Yeah. So it doesn't even matter what bike you're on, you're doing... the, The main like change for me was I got Mongoose then sent me the downhill bike that they had right and then I was lucky enough to be able to get to go to Loose Fest and I went and did two years of doing that and that was the main so that was first experience of big yeah, jumps big jumps alright so you get so Loose Fest that's we're moving close towards Dark Fest and I don't want to mm. start talking about Dark Fest because we won't be able to stop because it's very exciting at the minute <laughs> um, so you're now Riding slope style at a super high level, going from dirt wars to fees to just what? How, what's the path for that? Uh, well, it's just when well, back then, uh, even dirt wars was an uh, FNB event, so you get the points. Yeah. So as soon as you start stacking the points, and it took me a few years to then crack into even being in like the crankwork stuff. I was an alternate for like four years. Like, well, yeah, because yeah. because crankworks is diamond. diamond. So that's the top level. So in order to just for people listening, how how do you climb the ranks then? You, is it literally like the same as like racing? You have to 
Yeah, basically, you just have to get enough points, F and B points, to then qualify. Yeah. And then you get to the gold level events, and then it's top 25 or get invited. And then you, if you start doing top 10 to those, you get enough points, and it'll slowly build up. So you have to get, I can't remember what the actual like point level is to actually be qualified now, because they've changed it again this year. But you then should be in, or you'll get a wild card, like Jake Atkinson did this year. He got yeah. the wild card rookie of the year, so he'll be in Rotorua. Oh, right, really cool. yeah. So there's a few ways to do it, but it's more just a, you've just got to be consistent and try and get to all the events, which is where it gets hard because it just gets very expensive. Yeah. Like there's, you got to do it in three different continents and how many 21 year old or 18 year old kids have got money to fly themselves left, right and centre around the world to do these comps. But yeah, very true. People seem to make it happen. At what time did, that, at what time did you feel like it actually got like more serious or do you take training more serious? Uh, like two years ago, I really started. Was it? Really so in BMX, you didn't? I, well, I took it seriously, but it was more, I was still having just fun. Yeah. I just wanted to have fun. Now I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to try and work out. Definitely because I'm a little bit older now and need to kind of look after myself a bit more. Yeah. But yeah, definitely the last two years, I've definitely knuckled down a bit more. And so when, so bit, so putting BMX runs together would just be like, you're just literally riding and ticking off tricks. You're just like... Not really ticking off tricks. You just got to try and... After speaking to, like, because I always go and ask the judges, what's the best, what do you think is going to work better? What's, what would you rather see sort of thing? And they'll, won't give you any answers which is really useful they're just like agree with you it's like just give you something <laughs> they never do um but it's more just like trying to make your court your run flow yeah <clears throat> and like there's so many people that i watch if i watch the comps that are like pedal pass features yeah so like there'll be a jump box in the middle quarter pipe blah blah, blah and they'll like just beeline quarter pipe jump box yeah and they won't have gone and there's a hip over there do this and then come back like they'll just just straight line and just dodge loads of it out and that's, I think, where a lot of the boys have realised that they need to just have as much variety in their riding as possible and right. hit everything. Even if you're just going to do a bar spin on it, it's better than pedalling past it. So that you're actually talking about, like, because you're, cause you're mates with the Olympic BMX Park yeah, people, yeah. you're talking about, like, how to put together, like, yeah. a t- an Olympic medal winning run, which yeah. is insane, isn't it? Yeah. Weird that that's, if you think about the doing NAS yeah. back in the day, and now it's an Olympic ring oh, sport. Yeah. That's the thing now, especially with BMX, it's two diff- there's like almost two different lanes in BMX. There's yeah. like the Olympic competition and then there's like the Swamp Fest. Yeah. That's like, you've got the core, crazy, bit more wild, bit more raw. Yeah. And then you've got very, we're in the gym, we're having protein shakes, we're having AG1. And then yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so what, were you, what did you think of mountain bikes when you were first, when, when you were... Riding only BMX. Obviously, you were completely oh, immersed was, in BMX, yeah. but you just didn't... You, you Did you ever think about riding them or anything? Well, this thing, because I was riding the track all the time, so I was always yeah. around yeah, yeah, all yeah, like yeah. the dirt jet boys, and I just used to bully them all the time. Like, just come get on a BMX. Yeah, yeah. Just come get on a BMX. And now I'm like, I should have <laughs> jumped ship way earlier. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. It is, yeah, it's well interesting. Like, the thought of it being now an Olympic sport is bizarre, isn't it? Mm. Well, they're technically now, slope style is eligible to be uh, a Olympic sport now yeah because we've got women right they wouldn't do it they wouldn't do it before so that's what it is mm. yeah so they, it need, they need to have, have men's and women's what did I hear they're doing oh I heard they're doing something insane in the I think they're doing tag in the Olympics is that right I think they're doing tag oh is it that like is it the one in like over a frame though over like it's like yeah it's with like shopping our, trolleys and shit all it's like, like our weird Instagram algorithm we've got <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no like, it's literally like that they're like retired ones yeah. the, the old people doing parkour <laughs> but it's like young people yeah yeah doing tag and you get an Olympic medal do you would you uh, I guess an Olympic medal is an Olympic medal as long as it's got some colour on it it's a matter does it yeah it's true <laughs> it's true right so when you started, let's let's get back on it. I mean, I'm really interested. When you started training more seriously, what does that look like outside of like gym and stuff? I get like being fit, but in terms of like, because you've got some wild tricks, and from my perspective, I've never I've never trained for slope style, and I don't know what it looks like. I I know approximately what it looks like. It looks like, I guess, your compound. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll go way further back from that though. Cause please, when I was, please. When I was a lot younger, when I was like twelve, well, must have been like ten to twelve, I did gymnastics. So my spatial awareness sort of stuff is, I'm quite proud of how good I am at it. Like that's well I interesting. Back, I yeah. can always get back to my feet, so I'm willing to try stuff. 
Yeah. And I'll know that if something goes wrong, I can get back to a position. I'm not going to get too badly hurt. Sometimes it goes completely wrong and you land on your head. But So you'd say that's like mega key. A big, big thing. I always tell parents, like, oh, what should we go into? If you can get them into gymnastics, oh, that sort of stuff, it makes such a difference for slope style. Yeah. There's a guy in the States now who's, he was on the Olympic team yeah gymnastics so now he's coming into slope style and he's just like he watch people's video and see what body position they put themselves in he's like oh, okay i'll do that yeah and he's just going like that with his tricks it's man insane. it's so interesting because like, i think it's easy to um the reason i ask the question is because i think it's easy to watch let's say your third place run in rotorua where it actually looks easy it, you make it look well, I sound like I'm fucking. I need to get my. You make it. It looks easy mm. because it's a good run because it's a high placing run. Naturally, it's going to look easier. Yeah, yeah. Like which is why when people watch a meal ride, it's like it's almost a bit like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it yeah, looks yeah. easy, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it makes it look easy. And what he is doing is actually ridiculous. Yeah. Like even in Innsbruck last year when Godziak beat his first run, we all went, nah, no chance that he beat him. But I think they thought he should have but yeah. even I spoke to Brett Reader afterwards he's like yeah that definitely shouldn't have beaten his first run like the stuff he's doing he's 5-10 years ahead of everyone and he's not slowing down and he's getting even better it's even more annoying <laughs> <laughs> does it feel that way yeah annoying it's just like you know you're going to turn up and the only place you can go for a second place like you know he's going to win unless he fucks up he's going to get first place and do you see it as just he's I'd, put I'd the work I wish in. I could put bets on but I'm not allowed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Inside of trading. Yeah. <laughs> so do you watch him and think, man, he's put the work in? Is, oh, that, is, is that what you... Yeah, he he trains. He yeah. like, he'll go to that place in that dome in Sweden and he is there four days a week for six hours. Yeah. Training, doing everything physically possible you could do on a bike combination-wise. Like I went, I was there a couple of weeks ago with Max Fredrickson and Emma came for a session with us and you could tell he's like trying to be a bit coy with stuff. I'm like, oh, just, just, just do some front flip combos. He's like, oh yeah, I've been working on this. And there's like front flip oppo X up to oppo to regular X up to bar. I'm just like, okay, cool. Just like what, just, he's just playing. Wow. Yeah. It's interesting. It's, it, it's interesting because it strikes me as like, like biking, I think it's so cool. It's so different to everyone. Like it's so different. Uh, it clearly looks to me as if Emil doesn't need to have people around him whooping and hollering. No. To enjoy biking. It's like, he's like in it, doing yeah. it, ticking things off. Do you put yourself in the same category or do you have people around the whole time I, or do you? I definitely prefer riding with people. Yeah. I think that's just from BMX stuff. Like I'd rather ride with people and it's more like yeah, a like community sort skate of thing. Park yeah. atmosphere. But I can definitely get into his mindset sometimes. Like definitely when we had the COVID years, I was riding my airbag for six hours a day, four days a week. Right. Just because that's literally all we could do. And I had the facilities and I could. Yeah. And it definitely help my my game so let's anyway. talk about the, the compound then because your compound is what it now takes to be a slope style contender right pretty much everyone who's in the top 14 has got a compound right talk me through it we walk through the gates i'm imagining like i've never been oh it's i've it generally has got like jurassic gates as well it's has it right. yeah yeah because it's nice. like it's at a um it's at an adventure park right so the guy bought a quarry and he's built it. He's put like aqua parking, zip lines, go kart tracks, everything. What and a I lad! Knew, and he's put, what a lad! Yeah, he's an but abs- life's he's a an stag do for this guy. Absolute legend. <laughs> um, but he's got the only place in the UK for the Red Bull cliff divers to train. Oh. So he's got a twenty-six meter diving platform just in his quarry. So I knew he was up for doing some silly things. So I was yeah. like, this came out. I just gave him the spiel. This is what I'm doing. So I'm trying to do. I've got nowhere to train. Is there any chance I could build something on your property? To do it, and he's like, "Yes," like literally within thirty seconds, yes. And we walked around the site and found somewhere. And randomly, he had a big digger on site that he had booked for too long. He's like, "Yeah, that sat there for the rest of this oh. week." And he was like, "Go for it. I've got a digger there, driver there. That's going to be sat here doing nothing. Get it stacked." And literally stacked all the landings, cut everything in, cleared wow. all the trees. So that was quite a key. Was that quite a key moment? Oh, massive difference. Yeah, yeah. like lighting day for me. And yeah. then I had that. Just I had like the slope style jumps. And then I bought the airbag and then built all that in as well. Right. So what's an, so we've got slope style jumps. How big are they? What are we talking? Because when you look at Joyride, it's like, 
how how on earth do you they're, they're big jumps like mm. slope style now is really quite sizable jumps people are running small amounts of suspension for a reason um what what do you build to train for those size jumps you don't have to actually build that size features okay. you can train stuff on smaller things and then just slow them down when you get to the bigger events so i'm <sighs> all of my all of my slope style all my like slope line is probably 20% to 30% smaller than the crankwork stuff. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay. Because you don't need it to be that big. Then it's, just no. risk, it's just risk to reward. Like, you don't yeah. need to be sending it that hard. But so my, there is that sweet spot yeah. of risk, risk and reward. And if I make it massive, no one will come and ride it with me. Yeah. So I make it so people actually want to come and ride it and have yeah. a session. So that's fine. Then my airbag, it's probably 90% of what they have at the slope cell comp. So it's like 11 foot takeoff. That really changes things, yeah. doesn't it? Because even me as a squid... I'll go from riding my um, jump bike at some small sandy jumps where I'm happy doing a backflip and a mm. 360. And then I go to a bike park and I'm on it. And then all of a sudden I'm on a 29er and we're doing it off a flat lip. And like the, the change is quite a lot. It's enough for me to doubt myself, even though mm. I've been doing backflips and spins for 20 years or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's enough to doubt myself. So I imagine that for like slope style is massive. Like if you were doing it on a a jump box in Mount Hawk and then going to Joyride. Like the gap's oh, so yeah. big, isn't yeah. it? It's like... It's just big. That's why some of the boys who ride that, um, like the way Nikolai trains is tiny. Yeah. I don't understand how he gets away with stuff he does. Really? Yeah, it's incredible. I know he's got his own stuff that he's got built, but that's under five foot of snow or winter. <laughs> yeah. Like I think the MOD shows definitely help him out for the winter training. That's like his winter training is going to do shows. But is it... But it's... Essentially, when you get into, if if we're talking about size, you can learn stuff on smaller things. It's not necessarily safer all the it's time, not, is it's it? It's not exactly safer, but it's not no. exactly more dangerous. No. Just because you're not going to be falling from as high. Yeah, yeah. So there is a bit of give and take to it, for sure. But when you're, when, okay, talk to me about the cash roll, dude, because... I well, don't I'll really te- understand. I'll teach you one if you want to learn one. Really, you reckon you can? You've gone you through can, it enough. Yeah, I taught pilgrim them. I, I really, yeah. Them, yeah. How interesting! How did you approach that? That was with your slope style compound. No, we were at Lapoma and the foam pit. Ah, there you go. I wanted to try them forever. I was like, all right, then we'll go up and I try and teach you them. Really, yeah. yeah. But what? What about for you though? That's what you're saying. Uh, so for the... me, it was. How, where did I learn them? Because I can't actually remember where I learned them or how I learned them. What components do you need now to be riding? Let's say joyride. What what tricks are we talking? You got they, what they want you to do is three combos per jump. Basically, they want you to be do a spin, a flip, and then have two tricks in the thing. Right. Like, unless you're doing like double flips, but that's a double combo. How yep. they look at it, but they want you to be doing triple combos really on every feature. So a triple combo every feature. Yeah. Are so we like, talking both ways? So yeah, preferably both ways. And they, they want you to have variety the whole way down. So if you're going to 360 one, one jump, they would like you to do an opposite 360 on the next jump. Right. Just to show that you can do it both ways. This is where ML is God's gift to the world. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty unbelievable how yeah. ambidextrous he is. It makes you wonder how his like brain work, whether you, if you give him a pen, whether he just writes his name down with yeah. a different hand. He Don't can I'll do double him. signatures. Yeah, silent session, <laughs> just doing two at a time. <laughs> That'd be so sick, wouldn't it? Right, so we've got triple combos on each jump, and that's what you're training for now. Yeah, pretty much. And let's say a combo trick would be a tuck my hander, a bar spin, yeah. a tail whip. Yeah, one foot can, no foot can, two commands. So the high scoring yeah. ones are... It's usually that it seems to be more like the bass and tail combos because they're so much more fluid for everyone to get used to. Yeah. Like it's very easy to like not take your hands off on a tuck and hander. Yeah. If you go for like a flip tuck and you get a bit awkward, you can like not take yeah, your hands I off. Yeah, I see but, what you mean. Yeah, with yeah. a flip tail, like a flip whip, you are going to kick that Yeah, tail the risk whip. is much bigger. Yeah. I, I've got to say, um, I'm trying try not to be too, uh, you know, I don't want your head to explode on air. But I really love your runs because there's an element of like risk. I'm definitely pushing myself. Yeah, like, like I really enjoy watching your runs because of things like the the you know double flips and these like big hitter tricks that you know involve a load of risk. Like some some part of me is I find it ultimately impressive the opposite this way that way bars spins. Yeah. But, but unless unless you know what you're looking at, people just don't understand yeah. it. And, and, and people and understand a double back. Exactly. Up. And I don't know what I'm yeah, looking yeah. at. I honestly don't. I, I remember on the 
on this podcast, we tried to do like a, a rundown of Emil's run. It was like a few years ago. Yeah. St- mind-blowingly impressive. But Chopper was listening and he was really laughing because <laughs> I, I just couldn't, I couldn't even keep up with it. And I don't know. I don't know what's downside, yeah. what's switch, what's opposite. Yeah. I don't. They now have a guy, um, Lucas Squealed. He's one of Emil's training buddies who now, he's like, he should be in Crankworks <coughs> soon. Um if he's not qualified, they get him in the booth to run for everyone's tricks. Right. So on the broadcast, they he can go duh, 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 and like list everything that's been done. Yeah, because it's, it's got to that level now, hasn't mm. it? Part of me though just loves a good old fashioned double flip or a twist or just something just like. Well, I would, my favorite person to watch at slope cons is um, Simon Godziak. Yeah, just it's full moto. It's just he's going to do the biggest Superman of his life on one of those jumps. Yeah. It's just going to be sick. It always gets me fired up anyway. He is cool, isn't he? He is cool. Mm. Rampage. He rode, on, on. he rode all of Darkfest this year with no knee pads because he had a that's massive cut on his legs. So he just rode no knee pads and a helmet. That's why, yeah. <laughs> Went surfing, got a massive gash on his leg, like deep. And he's like, yeah, I can't put knee pads on. It hurts too much. So I'm just going to go no knee pads. What guy? Was he chilling? Or? He was chilling quite yeah. hard, yeah. But. Wild, <laughs> yeah. wild. So you're, you're looking for th- triple combos. Mm. Every jump. That's what they want, yeah. And every feature. So you But then it's like triple combos, if they if you're just gonna do loads of bar spins, they're gonna like, okay, you're good at yeah. bar spins. But I just want I would rather try and do something and just extend it and hold it. Yeah. So like I love doing front flip no handers and I'll try and hold my no hander off as much as long as I can. And like flip supermans, I'll try and keep my feet off for as long as I can to keep my legs pointed and yeah, try yeah. and get back to it. Like I don't want to be rushing around doing loads of bar spins to tail whips. Yeah. It's, I not, you, it's yeah. not something I've ever wanted to do. And I've like I'm not gonna try and go down that avenue of just having to learn bars and the table combos. Yeah, I'm with you personally. I know mm. what I like watching and it is exactly that. Mm. Who do you watch that in, that inspires you or that gets you hyped? Because I imagine that's quite hard. I've never really even thought about it, mm. but like, who do you watch? Who does Emil watch? What? I, don't know, I don't know who Emil watches. <laughs> <laughs> probably just a mirror. Just everything's in reverse. That's why I learned everything opposite in reverse. Um, I don't really know. I just, I get hyped up on anyone watch riding really. I'm yeah. not really, I'm, I know that I'm, well, I'm the oldest guy on tour now. So I'm not really competing with the young boys. I'm just going to compete against myself and just try and, as long as I'm happy at the bottom, even if I come 10th, I don't care. If I've done the run I wanted to do, I'm stoked. God, that's a sick mm. way to be. Yeah. That's cool, that. I like that. Right, so we're, right, cash roll, twister, these wild tricks. Mm-hmm. Are these things you've learned at your compound? I definitely learned twisters at my compound. I can't. I literally cannot remember where I learned cash rolls. Yeah. No idea. It would have been with Nikolai at some point, but I can't remember where. What would you well, like? Actually, no, I learned them at, Skills Park before the place in Switzerland that's got an oh, airbag. Yeah, it was yeah. like the first main public airbag that we had. Yeah. And it was always before a couple of events. So we always go out like a week early, right. ride this airbag and then yeah, go to yeah. the comp. And I learned cash rolls and cork sevens there. And I think I did the cork seven in the one, I didn't do the cash roll. But yeah, that was where that happened. But then the twisters I did at my on my airbag. So how do you go about it? What's the process? Because it's is very, it just cash roll, but more? Yeah, it's basically a very similar start to a cash roll. But as you go off the takeoff, you just pencil yourself out and just make yourself as small, but as long as possible. So you just spin really fast. Right. And then you go back into doing cash roll again. So it gets to a point that it just does become like... Gymnastics. Gymnastics. Mm. God, that's wild, mm. that. So then you've got these just tasks and you're just at your compound on your own, are you? Or you're with someone? Well, there's or? a couple a couple of young lads now from like further... Like, young lads you are the track now yeah. like, we want to ride something bigger I'm like well I've got it I don't really care it doesn't owe me anything I don't care like I know some people get would get quite like don't want people to come to their compound and yeah. ride stuff so I'm just like it's paid off it doesn't owe me anything and if I can give back to those boys and give them the next next wave of like UK slope guys then I'm more than happy to help them it's and so it, sick it's paid yeah. off I love the idea that you know, this giant bouncy castle landing is like a business expense. It's yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> it really was. It was, yeah. 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 Nice so, big tax write-off. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> so you've got, uh, f- so t- onto the airbag, you've got big sort of 90% slope style kicker, which is like, what, nine foot? It's 11, that one. 11 mm. foot tall takeoff. Mm-hmm. Golly gosh, there you go. And then you've got... And f- I've got the bone log as well next to it. You've got a boner yeah. log next yeah. to it. And then you've got a flat drop as well. I've got a flat drop on the comp line on the like the slope, ah, not okay. on the um, thing. But with the boner log, it's still the same because it's flat. It's the same yeah. pull as a flat drop. Right. Just you go up a little bit first. So if I can learn it on the boner log, 
I just know that it's going to kind of work onto the flat drop. Yeah. I just got to just get the angles slightly different. This is you at work, dude. This yeah. is you. This is you at your compound that yeah. you've put money into yeah. at work. I, oh, I would I've love done a flip, flip something off my boner log. Yeah. <laughs> I should work pretty much the should, same should, on the. Yeah, it should work. <laughs> I'd love to build a flat drop onto mine, but it's the amount of money and scaffolding is ridiculous. Yeah. So it's just. You've already got quite a bit of scaffolding up there, have you? Is yeah. that the rolling? Yeah. Rolling and the bone logs all scaffolding. I've I've just seen clips of it, yeah, so yeah. it's all scaffolding then with just boards on top. Yeah. I've just like clamped down and bolted to it so it doesn't move. Yeah, so that's the necessity now yeah. for and and how often would you go there to like re It all depends I would go there if it was up to me like three, four days a week. Would you? Yeah. yeah. And like I might not be doing like six hour sessions, but I'll go for like a two hour session and I just get after it and just go full full ball and that's just tick things off that's tick just off, make yeah, sure it, everything's just yeah, there it's there and then if people come up to ride with me then i'll try something silly yeah then I've, then there's someone there to watch me like, i'll do dude how <coughs> cool is that that it's just yeah it's literally just like keeps you there and it completely goes with what i was saying about like hating going somewhere and thinking i can't actually remember if i can do this yeah. or like i don't have you never have that feeling don't well you do sometimes but yeah it's, just, it's more it's not even like you don't remember doing it it's like how am I going to do this on this feature? Yeah. Like, because it might be a hip. It might be, it might be something you've got to land perfect to get to the next bit. Like, how's this? That's more the things I'm worried about now. Yeah. I'm not doing the actual manoeuvre. Yeah. So you just minimise, like, mistakes, basically. Yeah, try to. God, that's pretty cool, that. Is it big enough to get on your big bike onto it and yeah. to get any sort of, any form of preparation for big bikes? No. Not, not really, at all. Not really. There's nothing. No. That's why I just go to Woody's. If I, if I want to ride my big bike, like for Dark Fest, my training for Dark Fest, I just went to Woody's and rode the fastest tracks there and just got used to going fast again and doing high speed things. Yeah. And just being able to be calm. <laughs> now, the biggest one we got there is 50 foot, which for a UK bike park is pretty big. It is big as well, isn't it? Yeah. Through those trees. I've yeah, ridden yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. I had a mint time there. I couldn't believe I'd never been. Yeah. Woody's is killer, it's right? It's like a bit of a hidden gem, really. It is, yeah. It's just that little bit out of the way. But it's in Cornwall, so you just make a weekend out of it and there's loads to do. Do you know what I've loved about it is that you get on the uplift, you get to the top and your heart's still beating from the run down, so you just keep all the hype. Yeah. If you've just like nearly come off on the way down and you're hyped and talking about it on the bus, you get to the top of the run, you're still hyped yeah, yeah. and you drop straight in again. It's like crazy small uplift, isn't it? For how, yeah, for how small the hill is, there's loads of riding as well. I think the, uh, the uplift's quicker than the runs down. Yeah. Which is rare to, <laughs> rare to have. Yeah, isn't it? Right, the commute is making more sense to uh, 120 foot backflips or whatever now, to me. Already, you're putting the pieces together. Last year was pretty good for you, right? Yeah, best year of my life, I would have said. Why? Did 120 foot backflip. Okay. Got two Crankworks podiums. Okay. Got, so a, the, got a bike sponsor after three years. Yeah, that's wild, that is. Yeah. So the Crankworks podiums. First one... Um, correct me because I'm quite bad. Rotorua. Yeah, first one was Rotorua. Rotorua. So you felt good at Rotorua. You felt like it was coming. I felt like that was the best I've ever been on my on my hardtail. Really? Yeah. Rotorua, yeah. And I learned. I literally learned the cork seven on the step down that the day before. No I had way. to do there. I hadn't had anywhere to train them. I knew I could do it. Yeah. I just had to actually do it and put in like in location. Guys, such weird like knowledge, <clears throat> like just taking that shape mm. and then making it. Yeah, that shape and then adjusting yeah, and then turning it into for a log or for yeah, a yeah. it's quite a lot of working yeah, out it's isn't a lot it? of brain work really yeah but it's more it's more feel like because you feel like a, so I did a cork seven on it but you still got to pull for a backflip so as I'm going to pull for a backflip and just slow that down and make myself as long as possible so I spin slower like I would be in the position for cork seven then yeah. I know what the pop's going to be for it and then I just got to commit to so you're talking gymnastics language there I, I, yeah. I get exactly what you're saying but like like break it down for people at home listening so you go off a jump you want to speed up rotation whether it's backwards or sideways yeah. what do you do so if you want to do a backflip like even if kids on the trampoline try and do a backflip they'll pull the legs in make themselves as small as possible and you'll spin faster yeah if you want to slow down you make yourself as big as possible like if you watch me do the even the 120 flip you realize how extended i am because i'm trying to make the flip as slow as i can yeah so you're yeah. opening up making the basically you, the shape of it's, your mass yeah. as big as possible big in, yeah so, right, so the opposite of that is like stretched out yeah. 
Right. And then the same would go for a spin. If you're if you're spinning sideways. Yeah. Pull your arms in, pull your legs in, you'll spin faster. Makes sense, right? Yeah. And that's and that's what people have to do in gymnastics. So that's what yeah. you've just taken to bikes. Pretty much. There you go. Mm. I like that. I like all that that language. Like yeah, oh, open up. And you hear when you hear like two people talking that both know. Yeah. I, most of the time while I'm talking to like those boys, you don't even have to say it. It's like you do yeah. it's like you ever seen that really old clip of the guys from the motocross? Talking about riding whoops and stuff, and it's yeah. just it's just yeah. motorbike noises. It's not anything, but they know oh. exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. I love that. It's so yeah. cool. What a weird group of people you travel around the world with the whole time. Yeah, it was fourteen of my best mates. On yeah, lads' holiday. It is pretty cool. <laughs> that that is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Is that what you used to feel like in BMX as well? No, BMX because it was so many more people. Yeah, it would. You'd have your, your mates you would ride with. Yeah, but this one's just like it's just condensed i can't work out with with sports because it's in it really individual sport like mountain biking seems to have such a good it's really good like that isn't it? it's really friendly and and bmx probably as well but like then you go to supercross no one talks to each other really as such no. it's more head-to-head racing i guess like different sports have really different i think that's just because like supercross is a team sport really yeah. where ours is very individual and there's only 14 people we can talk to about it yeah so if you don't talk to them you're not going to have any insight to it whatsoever yeah it's true and it's you've 14 people you've got so much in common with yeah that you're always going to get along so it probably ramps ramps up the development of yeah. slope style and stuff as through that right definitely does yeah yeah i'm looking forward to see what jake does this year for sure he's really gonna, yeah yeah i think he's going to go on an absolute rocket tour he's going to go mad so just just because he's going to be in in with that crew and yeah. like way more focused and getting to ride the best courses and he's and he's young as and well. He's though. young and he's very hungry and he's very talented. So you can just take on all of that yeah. information and just yeah, it's interesting, eh? Mm. It's interesting. So road to you felt good on the on the run in. I'm oh, sorry, I went on a tangent there. It's basically what podcasts are. Yeah. So you've got the Cork Seven for the first time and you feel really good on a bike. Yeah, I've well, I did a month in. I did three weeks in Queenstown before. Yeah. And like it was like me, Nikolai, Fedco, Emil was there. Didn't didn't see Emil that much. He was at his own he had his own special training compound, surprisingly. Um, Actually in yeah. Rotor. Yeah. <laughs> no, in Queenstown. In Queenstown, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Red Bull paid for him to have his own compound built so he could stay there and train. No way. Where yeah. even is it? It's gone now. Took it down, taken it away. But yeah. Built a bit of a Three weeks and take it down again, dude. We weren't allowed to go anywhere near it. You know you're in a, sp- a proper <laughs> sport though. That's cool. It's yeah, cool, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Like that is proper. That's like f- Formula One esque. Mm. Like what? What? You, it doesn't. It's not that easy to just build a a course to train on, is it? Well, it wasn't really a course. It was just a uh, an airbag and a mulch jump. Okay. So it wasn't like a full slope line, but <coughs> it was everything he needed to train because he was there for a Red Bull project, for like a big bike project. But he needed yeah. something to train for. Obviously, for oh, f- an event. I find it so yeah, it's so cool. And where would you rather be in the middle of winter in Sweden, in five foot snow, or in Queenstown in with your own garden jump? Yeah, you can go and ride and in the hills and then go back to your own garden jump. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there you go. Be right, in, so be you, in twenty four hours of darkness or in Queenstown. What would you rather be? Yeah, <laughs> where true. I'd rather be. <laughs> so you were hanging what Dreamline or Gorge Road? This is interesting. That's a good question, actually. It's if I do say so myself. Everything. When everything. You're there, you take both. I take. What's both. closer? To what you're going to ride? Oh, Gorge. Gorge. For sure. Okay. But then there's Mini Dream. Yeah. Which has got the mulch jump, which has got wooden lips for slope start. And now they've got the airbag there as well. So yeah. it's kind of getting to the point where everything is... Because like Dream is like closer to the size, isn't it? Yeah. So boys go up and ride their hardtails up there. Quite Do a lot. they? Yeah. Because yeah. then it's like, you will go down and ride Mini Dream on the mulch and stuff and train everything. But then you go up to Big Dream, ride it on your hardtail and it's, a, it's a, the speed thing. Yeah. It's just being able to slow everything down and get used to that again. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Mm. Would, do you find it like a modern day slope course? Do you find it like a fun course to ride? Or it, it, does it feel like you're having fun riding just as a line? I'm not talking about putting a run together. Mm. I'm just talking about like a line. It all depends on the course. Like I, I've made it very, very vocal that I didn't get on with Cannes course. Ah, okay. It's quite techy and quite slow in some sections. But then, like the Whistler course this year, I had the whole course to myself for six hours because it was a little bit windy and no one wanted to ride. Yeah. But I had a $400,000 slope style course to myself. I'm like, oh, I'm going to ride this as much as I can. Yeah. The Whistler one looks rad. Yeah. Whistler one's sick. Whistler one is fun. It's scary in places, but it is a lot of fun. Yeah. Wait, we're not on to Whistler yet. 
we're still on Rotorua. Rotorua, Rotorua, Rotorua. The Rotorua course is fun. So the Rotorua one has like that long jump just before the end jump. Is that right? No, that's gone now. It's a big roll because they built the step down. Ah, okay, yeah. They okay. built. It's just a big roller now. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think they're making any changes this year, which yeah. is surprising. Now they're bringing the women in. I thought they might have changed a few little bits, but yeah, nothing. Which is quite cool to see. See how they get on for the whole whole course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should be good. So you know, so you've you've worked. Do you remember your run? Yeah. Rotorua. Remember it completely. Yep. Do you have like that memory about every? Not every event, but those like some. I mean, obviously, yeah. yeah. It's that a big one. one. I've, that one I've watched back a few times quite clearly. <laughs> Talk me through your third. This is your first Crankworks third place. First podium. Yeah. First podium yeah. for Crankworks. So it was, uh, had the flat drop. It's like a tiny bit roll in, then did a barrel roll flat drop. We into real tight, real tight bomb hole. Like there's not much flat bottom. Into an overspun cork seven, on the hip like an eight ten. Then it's the long roll around the corner, around the berm, into the next takeoff, double flip, big pump. I think I pedaled as well. And then I did a 270 truck over where they had the wall ride. I didn't want to do the wall ride, so I just trucked the thing. And then front flip, turn the hand on the bone log. Into There's like a hitching post thing they built, or you could use it as a jump box on the outside. And I went for the outside and did a flip bar spin. Did I flip bar? Yeah, I did, flip bar spin. And then tuck the hand of the spine, cork seven down, and then carried as much speed as I physically could in that last jump and then went for a twister and then you could definitely see that I was excited afterwards <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that's so, no wonder there's so much to remember and yeah. there's so many but it's not one of those things that you need to remember it all because once you've done one thing you, it's gone you don't care about it you've forgotten about it okay so you do like I do the double flip on that the main big jump in the middle yeah I've landed it cool you're not like oh sick I've landed that you're like so okay, you're just now, ticking it off now next what's next what's next what's next and you never really have trouble remembering because you've built up this up. Uh, it's not just a run. It's like a build up of a mm. week's practice. And, Wait, no. and yeah, you're there for a week. So you know what you're going to do. Yeah. It's not like, you know, oh, what am I going to do on this jump? It's like you pretty much got it set in your head. Yeah. See, I set things in my head at trails. Mm. Oh, I'm going to do this. And then I forget, which is obviously a stupid comparison. But because of it, I, I always like, I always have that like panic moment. Like, oh, there's a question for you, actually. How long do you usually take to get used to a new set of trails? If you go to, like, imagine you've never been to Wisley. How long would it take you to get used to them and ride all the way through? Being comfortable. Being comfortable? I don't know. Tra trails, I feel quite comfortable quite quick, I mm. would say. But then to pull up proper yeah. on them. But it's that, that's what I want to do. I just want to yeah, pull yeah. up on every jump. So it probably takes yeah, yeah three or four runs before I start to... Before runs? Yeah. Wow, that's quick. It takes me ages on trails. Does it? Yeah. Why? Don't know. Always does. Is it because it's uh, um, all techy and slope. angles I don't know. and stuff? I, yeah, I don't know. It's not it the is. same on a slope course. No, it's not at all. It always takes or me. Or 120 foot. Yeah, it takes jump. me ages on trails. Really? Yeah. So interesting. Yeah, I would say before I start pulling up, it's not, not that many. But then I can go to Gorge Road and I can be pulling back, pulling up within three or four runs. But if I go to a normal set of like, trails I make to build the woods, takes me a while to get used to them like we weren't like we're in why is that i don't know i really don't know like we were at um the hell's end jumps at dark fest luckily they got dirt jumps this year across the road and i struggled to ride them mate that's bizarre because yeah. that's like the exact stuff i would imagine you to be yeah i could get through them like after a couple like a couple runs but i was still like oh god uh yeah speed right oh and those jumps are literally concrete i've got i've got a few like um creepiness is with new sets of jumps like i don't like it if i feel like i've got a bad day ahead if i don't get through first time oh, really? which is like I'm, I'm glad i don't do the stuff you do because yeah. <laughs> it's a bad like to expect to get straight through mm. one of those lines is even like joyride i uh, even even the slope style courses i'd imagine they take a bit of like breaking yeah, well, horrible huh a little bit but the thing with joyride is they don't open the full course sometimes right. so like this year we could we barely got to ride the last couple features yeah, because they had to use the finish corral and we couldn't stop yeah, in time. Yeah, so yeah, you, like yeah, yeah. you can't ride into the last bits. So you like, we probably got like three hours on the last feature. Yeah, out the, from the whole week, just because they had to use it for the downhill, for the um, speed and style finish, for the air DH. It's like it was always being used. So we couldn't. Yeah, totally. Yeah, interesting. Mm. So you you feel like you were fairly prepared. Obviously, you've come off a third place in Rotorua and you've come into Joyride knowing that that now you can podium at crankworks well, i guess it wasn't even that like i was still because i had my next well innsbruck and cairns i crashed my friends yeah 
So I generally, if I didn't do a good run in Whistler, I probably would have been off tour. So that's just the way the, pow- yeah. the points work. Yeah. Like I've got, because I've done the two Mate, events. that's ruthless. Yeah, but, but because I've done the two events, I've still got good points because I've still got diamond points. Right. But I needed like a good one to like, car- like guarantee myself a good spot. So, so your breakout year almost, you know, you're saying the best year of your life almost could have been you off the tour. I would, I, I would have been back on tour, but I would have been like needing to get good results again. Yeah. But like this year now, because I got top four in the overall. Yeah. I'm now pre-qualified for the now whole. Now you're in. I know I'm pre-qualified for every, I'm in the whole Diamond Series. Yeah. Which is like, cool. I can go to my sponsors and say, I'm at every event. Yeah. Which yeah, it's amazing how it works. Yeah. 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 So you felt some some pressure during your ride or not really? You do because there's forty thousand people there. Yeah, it's how pretty many, cool, isn't how it? How many people? Thousand people are there, and then I was the only one riding for most of the day, so I was most comfortable on course. Yeah, I, well, I I thought I was anyway, and then Emil rode the whole course with dislocated shoulder and still won. I don't know how he did that. <laughs> Literally had his AC separated shoulder, ripped a load of ligaments in his shoulder, and then still won. <laughs> He's pretty. He's pretty impressive, isn't pretty he? He seems to be a theme coming up mm-hmm. again and again in this conversation. The Emil's a freak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. It is pretty amazing. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess uh, especially yeah. for you because you've put s- so much work in to tr- sort of try and compete with him. Mm-hmm. It's more of a mystery. It's more. I I don't even try and compete with him anymore. I just leave that to Nikolai and David. Yeah. Like they're those three are the ones that are really going for it. Right. But I still think he's a couple of years ahead of everyone else. I mean to be a couple of years ahead, and it's not like it's not like year on year nothing happens. No. Like these, this is like a sport that's like still pretty yeah. wild, isn't it? Like there's n- there's new tricks being mm-hmm. added. I mean, I, I've got I've got to say, for, from the outside, it's like terrifying to me to be in a game where it's just everything's changing. That like the goalposts are changing the whole time. You're just like. That all of a sudden, oh, now we have to do twisters, or now we have mm. to do. But interestingly, I that's guess that's just where the bar gets set, though. Yeah, because it could it could have just stayed there. No one could, no one could have ever done a twister. But we don't have Emil there. doing double flips, do we? If he wants to, I'm sure he will do them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> sure it's, it's just interesting, isn't it? Oh, I guess he doesn't. I swear, I think I've seen him do them. Yeah, I think I've seen him do them at like out I mean, nines I, and stuff. I, I swear, I've seen him do them. Don't doubt it, yeah. but like. It's it's in it's like he's worked out what he feels is the optimal mm. answer to a slope style competition. He, what he wants to get is he wants a hundred, right? But the only way he can get a hundred, he has to do it on his second run, right? So he needs someone to beat his first run for him to have to do a second run, and no one can do it. <laughs> <laughs> he wants a like, hundred. Like, like, he's the, quite literally chasing perfection. Yeah, yeah. Like the judges can't give him a hundred score on his first run because someone could potentially beat it. And then they've got nowhere to go. So they have to give him like a 96 or something ridiculous anyway. But then he doesn't need to do a second run. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah. Talking about that, I've, I've <laughs> obviously I've done years of like uh, having mates that are doing contests and just being at the contests. And I always feel like um, Slope Style is a weird one. Like, how you build up for it during the week because you don't just want to be riding that stuff all day, do you? It's not really what you do. You don't just ride a course all day, right? No, not really. You wouldn't, would you? I'll try not to. Even given wind conditions, everything, you still wouldn't ride it all day. You get way too tired. Yeah. You get way too tired. But you you try and like pick a section. So like Rotary, you pick the first three jumps. Yeah. You ride that for a day. Yeah. Get used to that. And then you'll go, okay, go to the next ones and do it in sections. Yeah. It's the best way to do it. If you try and do the whole course first day, you might, you might do a couple runs just because you can and it's a sick course. But when you start actually trying to dial in what you want to do, you do it in in, in segments. Yeah, yeah. So you've got a 45 second course that you're breaking down into segments and just trying to perfect basically. Mm. And that that is your goal. You wake up in the morning, you have breakfast and then you go up and you'll be like, this, this log needs to be trucked or this. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. There you go. And you sort of, I guess... For the more plain features, as in a double, you know what you're looking at yeah. for speed, and you know what you're yeah, looking yeah. at for size. So you can you've just already go, tr- you can just wind up and go for twisters and double flips. There you go, and that's still a big part of your focus for next year, eh? Yeah, wicked. 
Hopefully we can add some bits in, but they get quite scary now. So then you got third at Joyride. That's got to be the biggest. That's the biggest third you can get. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. It's the biggest third you can get. And then it's on to our topic of conversation we've been trying to dodge. <laughs> Dark Fest that you've just come back from. Yeah. Well, do you want to start with the one from last year first and we'll go into this year's? Yeah, let's do well, that. Last year was Mate, we, got, bit again. we got so much we can talk about <laughs> with Dark Fest Day. Eh? Because last year was seemingly you went there on a eBay bike, right? Yeah, bought a giant glory from 2016 off eBay for £300. Fucking, <laughs> <laughs> is a steal? It's a good bargain. Yeah, it's a good bargain. The guy was like, What are you planning on doing with it? Like, I'm just going to go do a few jumps. I think. Sent him the link. Local up, races. Sent him the link back afterwards. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. You sent the bike the link back. Yeah, it's like, oh, your bike's doing really nice. Loving it. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. I like I was I was trying to think of a a, a comedic um eBay name. You know what I mean? Like mm. DH guy sixty nine. Well, so there is a very easy one, a very easy one to the giant sixty nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> right, so You've got the bike and you've turned up at Dark Fest. This is your this isn't your first Dark Fest? No, this was my th- Third one? Yeah. Third one, yeah. Third so one. by now you've learnt the tricks and you've learnt the obviously the course. Yeah. But you've learnt the the smaller things that matter. Yeah. It's just trying to make trying to take as much variability out of it as possible. Like wait for the wind. Don't drop in when it's windy. Like I know some of the boys at slope events get annoyed with me for dropping in, in the wind, but I live in Cornwall, it's always windy. Yeah. <laughs> what can you do? But on that side of stuff, even I'll go, Okay, it's windy, I'm gonna chill for a bit. Yeah. But just just getting used to the speeds, the main thing there. The speed is difficult as well, isn't it? Well, you're doing over 70k into some of those jumps. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, yeah, I find it. You've been there, haven't you? You've, you well, you've walked the course. I don't think you. Did you yeah, ride, well, I, I went really, really early to. Um, is it Hellsend, the places? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I went the first year um, it was there. So it wasn't like there wasn't the 110. There was still yeah, there was the, the 90, 90 was there. Been, yeah, the 90, the hip, and the step up, wasn't it? I think the first year. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. So I, I went there for that for the first year, but it, it, I wasn't there when anyone was riding, so I've never really fully experienced... You were there with Joel, weren't you? Was Joel with you? The melon shoot? No, I was never no. there for that, uh. no. I, um, I've never really experienced what, you know, those, like, morning sessions are like or yeah. anything. I had my own one separately on the warm-up line, which were big enough for me. Yeah, They're yeah. absolutely fine. They're, like, 50-foot yeah, yeah. things. But even then, in the wind, you had to get up so early and, like... On a 50 foot footer, you can feel the wind. Mm. I imagine it's on a 100 footer, you can really feel it. Really feel the wind, yeah. We were doing five, well, I think the earliest one we did was a 5 a.m. wake up. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to get up on get up on course for half five. Knee pads on then, it's quite a wild thing. You yeah, it's still dark outside, putting your pads on. It's a bit weird. Quite literally dark first. Yeah. You've got to be quite up for it, I think, to do that. Mm. Like, if, you, if there's any element of you that isn't really fired up on these jumps... It's going to be quite a pain, isn't it? Yeah, but then there's no pressure from the like from Sam or anyone to make you ride. If you're not going, if you don't want to get up at five o'clock in the morning, don't get up. Five Even in your morning. own personal pressure, though. I mean, I, I felt more pressure this year than I did last year. I bet because I had so many people messaging me. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm like, mate, I bet. I'm just, I'm just want to survive. I don't really. I just want to come back in one piece. I don't really. I think I we know. talked about it on the podcast actually with Sam. I was like. Whoa, imagine being Tom, like you've had that year, because that year was quite something, eh? Mm. Quite weird to come back to normal life, I'd imagine, after it. A little bit, yeah. Like, yeah. even, like, random people in the pub would recognise me for it. It's yeah. like, oh, you're that guy? Like, yeah, yeah, that was me, yeah. yeah. Like, you can't go back to normality. <laughs> Wild. Mm. You opened up, so last year, the key thing that we're talking about, of course, is the 100 and... What even it's is it? 110. Okay. 110 to the nice... Down slope. Yeah. It's like 105 or something to like the back of the case yeah. pad. But where you actually want to land is 100, like 110. Or I think it might be 107. It's marginal. Okay. You're going to get 110, 90% of the time. So by now, all, all of your experiences doing other dark fests has like made it not, it's by no means chill. I'm not trying to downplay it, but you know what you're doing there, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So when you turned up and the 110 was there, what, what were your thoughts? What were your... Uh, it wasn't even like... And now it's like, luckily we could ride the 90. Yeah. So you could warm up on a big, long jump to yeah, start with. Yeah. And like, okay. And it was ju- it was more, the scariest thing was just the first jump. Okay. The first jump was the scariest thing out of all of it. And first that, jump being the where you go straight. Just straight, of, a straight air over it, just to make sure you can actually clear the gap. Okay. 
and I was stupid enough to do that as well. <laughs> Me and BMV were at the top having a rock, paper, scissors to see you could do it. Yeah. And I won, so I went first. You're both pretty dull, big big bike guys, eh? Try to be. He's very dialed. He That's all he does, though, is ride big bikes. Yeah, but you're really both like... from similar sort of like slopey backgrounds, yeah. aren't you? It's interesting. But he, he didn't really go down the like... He did a little bit of it, but not too much F&B stuff. Yeah. He's more of a show guy, doing like yeah, yeah, yeah. massive dirt stuff. That's true, I suppose, yeah. yeah. So they're, they're big jumps, I guess, aren't they? Hardtails, they're like high speed at mm. least. Yeah, but it... it, it there's certain people that you know have definitely got a bit of a screw loose I would have thought for sure for sure (laughs) definitely got that in common (laughs) yeah true yeah Um, so you rock paper scissors literally yeah that's going on from you saying (laughs) so you're doing rock paper scissors on who hits the 110 foot jump first I I had a full bit between my teeth that year like I had a point to prove like I didn't have a bike sponsored I was like am I going to be able to make this out of a career yeah and got up there I knew he wanted to do it I didn't even do a proper run in to the takeoff. The first time I actually hit the takeoff was when I jumped it. I didn't even roll up it. Really? I did yeah. a run in and pulled off and stopped. And I saw BMW going up. Like, I'm going to jump it. I was like, I'm not letting you get away with this. Steamed up the hill. Like, what people says goes first. And I just went as fast as I could. Pretty did much you? Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. So you've done the run in, you know what approximately what speed, but yeah. then it was. Didn't know what the takeoff was like, but this thought, I'm here. <laughs> and the first one felt like? Terrifying. If you actually watch the video back which is on Instagram, you'll see halfway through I go straight arm, straight leg. Yeah. Just feel like, okay, hope for the best. Yeah. <laughs> Try and get this on back on two wheels. What does it feel like at one ten? You just it's just you just realise you're in the air for a long time. Yeah. Like it could like it, even riding the jumps at like Woody's and stuff, like the mo- the motion you do off the takeoff is exactly the same. Yeah. It's just you've got to slow it all down. I guess the bike like, feels quite unstable. No, it feels real stable. Does it? Because your wheels, wheels are, are going that okay. fast, it doesn't really want to move. It has the gyroscopic. It, it has the potential, I guess, to be more unstable with that amount of time. Like if you hit it, if, you, if it times, starts moving, it's going to keep moving. Yeah. Like a couple of the boys on the ninety this year were trying, like whipping the ninety, coming back straight and going back the other way, <sighs> just because it's that much time. If you pull it back early, it just keeps going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, I hadn't thought of yeah. that. <laughs> so yeah, the so the one ten and and. Basically, I assume as soon as you saw it, you knew probably you were going to flip it. Yeah, well, it's, if it's a jump, you want to flip it. And that was one of the biggest ones on the planet. So it was a nice one to try and do. <laughs> so that was straight away, you were just like... Yeah, bit between my teeth. Let's get after it. I guess I, I guess it's easy for you to be... Feel that way coming into it after getting two podiums. Well, there's one. Cron- so I did the Rotary one. Podium okay, Rotary. sorry. Yeah, Podium yeah, Rotary. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting confused. Yeah, Podium yeah, Rotary yeah. and then went into Dark Fest for the 120 flip. Yeah, so this is oh, this back year. then. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So back then, it's quite easy, though. I, I can see why you were like... I was confident. Yeah. I was quite... I, was, I wouldn't say I was cocky, but I was definitely confident in my riding, and I was felt like the best I've ever felt on my bike. Yeah. And to be fair to that bike being that old, the giant I had there, Degrade. it was absolutely great for what I wanted to do with it, so... I couldn't really have picked a better one. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Giant all the way. Mm. There you go. Match made in heaven. It's a pretty cool story, actually. Yeah. I, I do like that story. One, so um, can you explain what a 120 flip feels like as well? It's like doing a 20-foot back flip, just a bit longer and slower. Where are you looking, though, dude? <laughs> because I, I almost... Well, if, you watch, like, if, you, if, you, if you can try and get the pop-up or something on here, you might be able to see it. Yeah. You might be able to overlay the video. Yeah. I don't look up for a flip. For like the first second, I'm literally looking forwards. So that's, that's I literally, just off, you I literally go off take off and do this until I'm like past ninety degrees. And then I start looking back. Yeah. And whilst you're looking forwards, because <laughs> I, I I always feel like with bigger flips, and I've done by no means anywhere near mm. what the size of flip you've done. But if I've done like a half of that, it's felt quite crazy. What's the biggest you've flipped? <laughs> 40. Yeah. It's 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 still the same like 50 body maybe. position, body positioning. It's all very similar. It's just but it feels mad not pulling for a flip to me. I'm less I'm less mm. gymnastic than you. So it feels like I'm really doing something quite crazy. Yeah, even yeah. even to me in control, I feel like it's quite a mad feeling just doing almost nothing. It yeah, feels it like almost sometimes. Nothing, yeah. Literally roll your eyes in the back of your head. 
<laughs> yeah, is that that's how you'd explain a 120 yeah. foot backflip? Well, not even that one. Like if on the especially on like the rockets at the bottom, the bigger ones, that's literally roll your eyes back in your head and you do a flip. Yeah, because they're yeah. steeper. But the right. 110 is literally just wait and then having to like suck it up and then start the rotation. Or she won't clear the gap. Yeah. You'll just start going up instead of forwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, God, it's a it's it's. I wish there was like a way of like you know those Apple Vision goggles. Mm. If you, you could, could, well, I could do that and put my GoPro version. <laughs> yeah, but how cool would it be just to know what that actually fit like to? But it's not even that. You need to like be in like a suit that you get yeah. off it, and then then it starts to rotate you or something like so you actually know what it's like. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? But it's it all be, body, it's not even like your head doing it. It's all body position, like doing it through your hips and like. But I mean, if you put if you put on like um, uh, if you put on like the goggles of a drone pilot, yeah. And they just, it makes your tummy go, doesn't it? It, oh, ma- yeah. it feels like when you go over a bridge in a car, like, oh. Like, I imagine what you, like wearing some goggles that actually felt like it was you with a 360 camera and then seeing what it's like to do. I mean, we're going to get closer and closer to actually knowing what it feels like to do. <laughs> At some point, yeah. I'd love take, to it'll know. It'll still take that. people like me in BMW and people like that to actually go and do it in the first place. So that's where it's yeah, really good. Which are probably the polar opposite people who would mm-hmm. buy 3D goggle. Yeah, whatever. yeah. <laughs> Which I can understand, yeah. But it's a weird thought, isn't it? Because looking forwards on that is pretty rare. Mm. There's, a, there's a select few. Well, I mean, there's actually there's three of us. Three people in the world that are uh, willing to look us? forward like that. You, yeah. Hodgie. I think it's me, Hodgie and Bienvenue. They yeah, flipped it. Yeah. Did Nicola? No, Nicola didn't. He just cased the back of it. <laughs> no, I think it's just us three. Yeesh. Yeah. So Hodgy did. Hodgy flipped it. Hodgy jumped it once and then flipped it behind me. <laughs> I jumped it like four or five times. Yeah, and I was like, "I'm going to flip it." And he's like, "Well, I want to flip it as well. I'm like, do it in the train." Quite a wild group of people, eh? Yeah. There you go. Mm. So you had to do that multiple, multiple times in order to get the world record, right? I think I flipped it probably about ten times in the end. Did you over yeah. the whole week? Like ten, well, maybe ten to fifteen times to be fair over the whole week. Yeah. And but the big the, one the was... The big one was literally the last jump of Dark Fest last year on the 110. Because the wind was terrible. And the luck, I just waited. Because I, I knew how it works there, because where the mountain is, in the evenings, it comes down off the hill. Yeah. So it comes behind the takeoff of the 110, so it just turns into a tailwind. Yeah. So I just sat and waited for it to be, be a tailwind, so I knew I'm not going to get blown sideways. And just went as fast as I physically could. Like, I speed tucked the whole way into it there's something the nice about um, I, well, well as Sam said on the, on the podcast here, it's like I wanted 110 I yeah. did like 107 it just didn't sound that cool so I wanted 110 and then I accidentally went 13 feet further <laughs> <laughs> 120 foot yeah. it wasn't um, mega harsh looking at it though no I, I, I barely bobbed my head like the impact was fine because the landing's so long and so the, long and it's you're, the parabola of the arc of the curve I feel like Matt Jones here talking yeah, yeah that was big I like this yeah it just it marries up perfectly. Yeah, have you had Matt on yet? No, no, you need to get Matt on. Yeah, it'd be Matt good. On. So the, he he looked like he had a whale of a time. Oh, he was there. loving it. Yeah, yeah. His main thing was to try and jump the one ten this year, and it just the weather just didn't play ball. Yeah. So this year, so after after the year that we've been talking mm-hmm. about, this year it was two months earlier, so yeah. February to March, and it was just a bit windy. I mean, it's the, the conditions were amazing, like bluebird days all day, but it was just. A bit windy. I'm hyped to hear about it because loads of big things happened this year. That you'll be mm. able to f- fill us in on more. What do you on, want to know? Well, I guess like had some dodgy haircuts. Dodgy haircuts <laughs> of, of which you got the best one. So you've won the award for dodging the bullet. Of, well, I had the pull on the one of the worst ones last year. Yeah. So I was like, I'm gonna go a lot calmer this year. <laughs> yeah. You look ready for an interview. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. it'd have to be quite like an edgy sort of place to work in. I feel yeah. like. But you could still go for an interview. Get yeah, a suit on, you go for an interview. Definitely. It's nice. Whereas some people, not. No. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Vero was brave. I like Vero's That was one. very brave. Yeah, that yeah. was good. That, yeah, was, that was good. a good commitment. Yeah, never seen a female nutty pee before. No. Huh? It's nut- nutty V now for Vero. <laughs> Is it nutty V? Yeah. That's good. That's good. What, well, yeah, what else happened then? The Russos went pretty mad for a couple hours. The Russos are pr- pretty mad, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, did some pretty... I, I, I want to tell you what happened, but I don't want to spoil the highlight video. Okay. I think when I is the highlight video out? And they wanted it at the end of the month. End of the month. But I think what? they're trying to get some pretty cool music, so it might be postponed a bit. <laughs> Shit, so we actually can't talk about everything. Not everything. everything. So we can you only could... really talk about things that I know about through social media. Yeah. Okay, right. 
Right, let me have a let me have a think. Okay. Well, a lot of the things that I've seen through social media have been some of the crashes. Some one of the crashes I wanted to talk to you about was the slow mo with you with Carson behind you. Mm-hmm. I assume it was wind related or something, but that's a big crash to have on a big jump. It wasn't wind. It was air density. <laughs> right. Talk to me about <laughs> air density. It sounds like something I need to yeah. know about. So stupidly the day before, the first jump of the one ten, I flipped it. And in my brain, the last time I flipped it, that's when I jumped it, I flipped it. So I just carried on with that yeah. movement. Probably very silly. Came up a little bit short, got away with it. Then the next morning, I was like, I know the speed, it's going to be fine. I'm just going to go as fast as I can. But in the morning, the air's that much thicker, so you just go that much slower. Ooh. And when I took off, I actually think, I've watched it back so many times, I think if Carson didn't jump off, he would have landed on the knuckle and bounced and probably been fine. I would have come into the back of it and landed like 50-50. So I had to jump off. I think because Carson saw me jumping off, he instantly just like, nah, I'm coming off as well. Yeah, you made a nicer, you made a nicer downslope. But because it was you. my choice to jump off, yeah. I wasn't reacting to anyone. Yeah. It's going to be easier. He's reacting to me and then trying to get off. So he's just going to be way quicker, like just rushed. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And he missed, he just had more of a yeah, he just fell. arc. Into and he's the, a, he is a bigger guy than me. Yeah. So he's going to carry more speed into it. So he's going to go that little further. There's so many variables. So you're crashing at, is that the highest speed on course? Oh, we don't know. Yeah. There was a radar gun there, but I don't think we got it out for the 110 because it didn't get hit. It literally got hit like four or five times. Yeah. Year. So we're essentially anything. talking about like, it's got to be, it, what would you guess at? I'm going to say it's like 80k. 80k. It feels, it feels faster than the, the step up, which is pretty fast. Yeah. 80 It's going to It's going to be in that. In that ballpark, right. So let's talk, let's have a, let's have a think about what's eighty k in miles per hour because I drive with, with the MPH here. Um, also, do I? I don't know what to do. Everyone had the K yeah. out for over there. Yeah, I just don't. I can't like think in. Um, yeah, in. Okay, that's fifty miles an hour. You're going in at that. Yeah, might not be that much, and that seems quite a lot. Probably around forty miles. I would have said. It's funny because we, we uh, um, there's loads of like chat about like how do you know what's when uh, at Rampage, everyone talks about like these features, like ha- you guys are crazy. How do you know what speed to the riders? Mm. And it's like they ask the question as if you really know what, like as if the number really matters. Yeah, it doesn't, no, it doesn't matter at all. It's all feeling. no, and it's different for each rider. Yeah, it's like I'll have to go. I'd have to go faster than like Sea Dog and Sam, right? Because they're bigger and heavier than me. They, I get affected by the wind more because I'm lighter. I'm going to slow down in the air more than they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So air density, how do you even measure that though? How do you know that the air's too dense? It was really cold. And you lit if like you felt like you could bite it that morning. Like it oh, was really? Thick. So it was like foggy thick. sort of feeling. It was yeah. thick. Right. Okay, we talked about one crash I've seen. Mm-hmm. I'm very glad that we're both. Okay. Yeah, I, was I don't know say. how I'm I literally was unscathed. Like not a scratch. Yeah, you just slid out nice, didn't not you? Not a scratch. I'm yeah. I'm amazed that Carson's not worse off because I thought yeah. it, he wasn't a, a knockout, was he? He wasn't knocked out, he definitely hit his head. Yeah. Definitely rung his head, but he was all good. Surprisingly, just very, very sore ankle. The next one I saw was uh, Adolf's crash. The swan dive. That's unbelievable. Yeah. The thing that's quite funny is he did it three times. Not the crash. Did the Superman, but wanted it bigger. But from when I've watched it and I've spoken to him, I think he went back to try and do it like he's on his motocross bike. Uh, and there's the weight that you can pull yourself back to. And he's trying to pull back a carbon fibre, yeah. basically a trail bike that he's on. And it's just, that comes to you, not you go into it so then you can't bring your legs back down so he's just stayed in this angle and then had to jump off it's horrible because like it just looks like a, like when you're watching any footage um i know what numbers you're doing but when i'm watching it it doesn't look like the crash is going to be bad until you hit the ground and then you realize how quick people are going like same for hodges mm-hmm. hodges over the 90 that was what was that a super seat super seat yeah flip yeah and and he he crashes. You think the crash is sort of like okay, and then you he see how slide. far he's sliding and well, the what one that, speed. The one that's amazing is mine and Carson's one. Like I stop, I'm stood up, and he's still sliding going past yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean that that sort of speed. You don't really. Everyone's everyone there is really good at crashing, I assume. But like at that speed, it's quite a weird one, isn't it? Yeah, it's just trying to mitigate injury. At that yeah, point. yeah. There There's go. definitely fe- like areas on that course that you can crash and get away with it more. Like the step up is semi slow. Yeah. Like on impact, it's semi slow. It's just yeah. landing awkwardly, like Dan did. He's landed awkwardly, and it just still, still. If you jumped off a six foot high wall, landed awkwardly, you could hurt yourself. You could. Yeah. There's 
That's that, that, that's frustrating for yeah. him, though, isn't it? You'd almost want to do it in like a hundred and eighty k an hour slide. Yeah, yeah. If you were going to crash, it's like yeah. yeah, poor guy. So now he's he's still out there. He's isn't still he? out there. Yeah, got he had surgery on his leg. Luckily, it was quite a clean break. So just he's got a big cage around it at the minute. Yeah, yeah. But, but he'll be on his way home soon. I feel really bad now because I've talked about like the crashes, but like ultimately, I don't get to see mm. a great deal until this video until comes, comes out. out yeah. So obviously, I saw your flip and we've talked about that mm -hmm. um there was the first uh female top to bottom well that happened last year oh, oh robin did it last robin did it last year as well but this year they had the first ever women's flip train on the step up robin and has both flipped the step up together ah that's what it was yeah. sorry my, my apologies like, i'm getting mixed up i, I did uh, via was doing top to bottoms yeah and did i think chelsea did a couple potentially i'm not sure it's quite hard because the course is so long yeah. and there's like three shuttles. You do miss things yeah. because you could be on the other side of the hill coming round. Like you don't know what's, if someone's dropped in and done something cool. You can sometimes hear a good shout and a holler, but that's probably about it. It's t <laughs> it's so mad to think it's like a mini bike park for that period of time. Yeah. Like people just shuttling up and yeah. doing laps and laps and laps. Well, well, it's, it's, over a, it's almost a kilometre long, the Dark Fest course. Kilometre, yeah. is it? Yeah. The weirdest kilometre you can ride your oh, bike yeah. down. <laughs> It's like the, the weirdest kilometre you can ride. Mm. How many Ks do you reckon you did? How many runs? Hey, let's find out after the break. Oh, finally, we get to my favourite ad. I think it is probably my favourite because it's the easiest one. Yeah, this one's easy, dude. If you've not got one of these and you're a mountain biker, yeah. then what are you? What are you, dude? Yeah. You're probably not cleaning your bike. No, you're certainly not. I didn't clean my bike before I got one. I'm also quite guilty of it. I mean, I didn't you. even have an outside tap before I got Did a you Works not? Hydra Shot. That's right. We're talking about the Works Hydra Shot. Yes. I use it every single ride. Yep. Same, mate. I'm with you almost every single ride. I'm going to say almost because that's the sort of guy I am. But I do try and I Free still style. keep my bikes in the house. So I do have to make sure she's yeah. clean because she comes in the house, you know? Yeah, there you go. But it is so easy because you've yep. got the power share system. Yep. Obviously, that's the battery that comes out of personally my leaf blower yeah my impact driver my chainsaw okay my i can carry on Shall i, I carry, can carry on carry on too Please, we're doing on, house renovations on. at the moment yep. as you know and i've got a few work tools in there so i've been using a grinder yeah strimmer done the garden recently nice uh impact driver impact got one driver's of those. lovely yeah the tire flater inflator oh i need to get one of them that's man. really yeah sick. hoover the hoover's brilliant and I use all of it I works off one battery it does dream how good is that yeah, right really so there's the difference between when i first clean my bike with a hydra shot mm -hmm. we're on to the 56 bar version aren't we yeah we are mate We've, they've added some extra power but i've got it's to not say, too much power no which is nice it's absolutely perfect this perfect. sound this sounds like just something that you say in the adverts and i bear in mind this is the adverts but mm. it is absolutely the perfect amount of pressure for a bike totally don't yeah. blow out your bearings not gonna you bite your bearings exactly right can, shall i read some um information about it yeah please okay so unlike conventional pressure washers with bulky body unit mains connection and garden hose attached to the tap the new works nitro high flow hydro shot so that's the difference Ooh. it's the works nitro high flow hydro shot mm. runs on batteries <clears throat> it draws water from any source. So you can do it from a river in Wales when you're out after the bike park. You can do it yep. from whatever, you, wherever. Yep. You can do it. Bucket. Bucket. Pools, bottle, lakes, even seawater. Bath. It's ideal for cleaning around the house and patio. Yep. I, or, no. I mean, we're talking about bikes. I did just auto cue that and just read what it said. But, but it's, again, it doesn't have to be used for your bikes. You're That's right. the cool thing. You use it around right. the house and yeah, absolutely. The house, you know? And I do, regularly. Yes. Equipped with Works built brushless motor 2.0, this high-pressure washer delivers excellent performance on powerful cleaning with a 220 litres an hour flow rate. That's a lot. She's flowing. She's flowing. Designed compact and portable at only 1.5 kilograms. You can take anywhere you need. Uh, it's got a five-in-one nozzle, actually also very useful. Yes. Sometimes it's, you want it on the pinpoint. Exactly. In the patio or something like that. Sometimes you want it a little bit wider. Maybe exactly. you're watching the flower beds or something like that. Absolutely. Um, this goes through all the other applications. But we, we know them, know dude. That. We, we can move on. We know them. We and know if you know don't that. know them, head to uk.works.com. Yeah. Um, and if you enter the code, the ride companion. Yeah. Is that you're caps? Uh, it, is. Ask. it is caps it's all caps just the ride companion yeah just the ride companion that's going to knock you 10% off amazing that's just on uk.works.com let's do 15% off can you do, are you that powerful yeah we'll speak are to you a, you're a podcast yeah, master yeah we'll just do it for can, two weeks 
15% off. Two, two weeks. weeks, 15% off. Like UK.works.com with the code The Ride Companion, all capitals. And it's across the whole range, except, except the robot lawnmower. But everything else. So you could you could build out your garage. Oh, that's a little really bit, good. Get actually. yourself a hydro shot, get yourself a drill, grinder, strimmer. All kinds of things. Sometimes when I feel lost in life, I actually just go on the Works website because I can't believe they've got that many products. <laughs> and so many. If I'm if I'm trying to str- if I'm struggling for jobs to do, I'll go on the Works website and it will actually lead me to the light. I'll find a job to do. <laughs> they've got great. so many tools; yeah. it's insane. It's all for everything. Get yourself to uk.works.com with the code the ride companion for fifteen percent off for two weeks. I can't believe Davey's doing this, but he's doing it. He's pulling the trigger. Yep, not literally because we don't want to get the studio wet. Okay. Thanks, Works. Thanks, Works. Right, okay, so what would be your guess at how many laps you did Dart Fest, Bike Park? Per session, you're probably going to do 10 to 15 laps for eight days. So, what's that? So, it's actually a lot, isn't it? It's you quite actually, a lot, yeah. And then that's a kilometre a lap. Yeah. A fast kilometre. Yeah, a bit fast. <laughs> Very fast, yeah. average. Yeah, a lot of airtime. Imagine it on Strava or something, one of those like funny app things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest stats ever. <laughs> Right, on that note, from asking questions, I know you've got to shoot off because you've got next next thing. we got going straight to listener questions and you've got a lot here. Okay. We don't have to go through all of them, but I'm going to go through. I think probably there's there's some good ones. We'll try and whiz through them so you can get on the road. Tarry.2wheels, DH Big Air or DJ Tricks? Can't I do both? Is that not allowed? Great answer. I think that's completely fair. Yeah, <laughs> and I think you do do both, quite Try frankly. To. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Norfolk and Proper. Where's the best place for a pasty? Barnicats. Barnicats, not Philps. Philps, not good. No, Barnicats. What's Barnicats? Barnicats pasties. What, what is that? Just a pasty shop. Liscard. Uh, they're, no, they've been from, they're from Bodmin, but then they've got a few shops around, but they're, just, they're the best ones. Are they? Yeah. I thought you were going to say Philps. Is Philps not good? Philps second place? I've never been to Philps. I just go Barnicats. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I wonder if there's beef between the families they have like probably yeah there's got to <laughs> be hasn't there there's got to be uh, favourite pasty filling from Boyle at 91 just classic steak classic steak Just yeah. so you just go for like dead basic just a Cornish pasty that's a traditional steak I might go steak in Stilton would you yeah I might go steak in Stilton is that quite edgy and uh, not really edgy it's just if you want something slightly different if you had three pasties there are edgy week. ones though and you've got an edgy haircut now maybe there you should are, go for a little you fancy one you can get one. some funky ones what's the funkiest some, pasty they're usually not in Cornwall but you can buy funky ones really yeah place. I've seen like curry ones like yeah like full curry in a pasty in London probably yeah. at the West Country no not even in London company. I think that was in like it was in one of the coastal towns but like oh, I think really? it was in like um, like Rock or somewhere like that like really just, yeah but the people from London most of the time anyway. Do you feel disgusted? Are you, I feel like it'd be well, quite I Cornish. I, did, I didn't buy it, so. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's proper Cornish bloke, yeah. <laughs> right, we got one from two to one racing that I don't know if you're allowed to talk about, but the UK Darkfest site. How big would you actually want it and what would be your dream feature? Or can you talk about it even? Um, I'll put I, you on the spot here, haven't I? A bit on the spot. I'll plead the fifth. Okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There we go. Was, well, the, I'll say there's potential. We're trying to do something. Oh, exciting. We're trying to do something. But yeah. Yeah, just a lot of a lot of plates to get spinning. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we'll move on. We'll move on. Honestly, the number of questions about your balls is insane. <laughs> but I can't tell you how many <laughs> questions there are about your balls, about how do you sit down, how do you ride with big balls, how does it feel to have massive balls, um, how do you sit down? These are all. There's <laughs> another. How do you sit down? Uh, is there is there something is there something behind this story or is this just literally from doing a flip I, that big? People instantly think about balls. I'm assuming that. Yeah, there's no no backstory to it. Don't. Would you say you've got average sized balls? I would or? say I've got average sized balls. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Interesting. That is an interesting fact. <laughs> <laughs> so so all the average ball people sat at home. No excuses, man. You can get out there. You can do 120 foot back flips. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Um, why did you switch from BMX to MTB? Seems a natural progression for some BMXers. John Milton asked you that question. Just because you can actually ride your bike more at contests and you get the same feeling of a contest instead of being stuck in big groups Yeah, in practice. That's the main main reason I did it. And I wanted to ride big jumps. Yeah. And they don't get very much bigger than mountain bike jumps. BMX jumps get stuck at six foot. Yeah. I mean, when you put it like that, it's, it, it, 
it's sort of quite seems quite obvious, doesn't it? Mm. Really. Um, Speedy Minty asked, "Did the eBay frame from Darkfest ever break?" Nope, it's on the wall at home. Is it on? Oh, I'm glad to hear it, dude. Yeah. That's good, and so it should be, man. It's yeah. Uh, in between other questions, honestly, I can't tell you how many balls ones there <laughs> are. It's absolutely insane. Uh, Matty Baker asked, "What's Paddy McGuinness like?" I don't know if there's any. Yeah, he's right. Hung out with him for like twenty minutes. I was right. No, oh, there you go. Okay, right. <laughs> no, I did. Um, I did take me out years and years ago. Oh, you did? Mm, long time ago. Yeah. How was so? How did that work? They messaged me on Instagram. Yeah. Do you want to come on? I was like, yeah. All right. Yeah. And I got paid to go on. Good it money. Took, I think I got like it was a couple grand. It was like worth nice. doing it. Um, but the thing that was really annoying is it took eighteen months to come out. Right. I then but, got a girlfriend between oh, that time. Man. That was a fun conversation. Oh man. Did you did you get a date on the show? I've watched yep. just like the, the clips from it. You did? Yeah, yeah. So what happened afterwards? You go away? Go to Fernando's or Tenerife basically for 36 hours and flew home. Did you? Yeah. And do you get on with the girl? Haven't spoken to her since. Speak to her on the island? Yeah. Well, you just do a date and stuff, but then yeah. that was it. And then okay. what happened? I went home. So it wasn't true love. You're not yeah. with her now? No. No. I'm very happy. Good. I'm glad you're happy, dude. I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, it's the one question that everyone always brings up. It's like, could someone please forget about that one now? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's th- two or three grand, whatever. It's good. Yeah. It's good oh, money earned. It's not, just, not just me that did it. Pilgrim did it back in the day. Yeah, exactly. And, and Declan Brooks. And many other people. As, as, really, yeah. yeah. Declan Brooks, yeah. So they obviously just go for like a couple of they just, yeah, they months kind of, and then well, they like, make it. Yeah, they got to get and, a biker on. Yeah, try and get something that's interesting to people to watch. I guess it is interesting because you just got the clip of the... They'll probably be back on the blower now, won't they? Mm. Now they, they've got the 100. Well, if they are, I'm well up for doing Gladiators. That's back on the... Uh, it is, TV. yeah. That'd be well fun. I did get asked to do Ninja Warrior afterwards. Really, yeah. And Naked Attraction. Avoided that one like the plague. But I, did, I was very close to the Ninja Warrior. Who? <laughs> I, I know that the Naked Attraction one is where the, the screen goes yeah, up yeah. and it reveals your genitalia and then yeah, your yeah. face is lost. Who decides they want to do that then? I don't know. No idea. Because it ain't just people with big dongs, no. is it? No. I've seen that program. Holy, you seen it? <laughs> it's that that thing is insane. It's the same as like that embarrassing bodies. If it's embarrassing, oh, yeah. <laughs> don't show it on TV. <laughs> That's like it don't make sense to me. Anyway, yeah, right. Um, this is an interesting one. Do you guys ever play hide and seek or tag while at the Dark Fest house from DHC six nineteen? No. You what have to chess? assume that he's play a lot of chess. Chess, do you? A lot of chess got played. Really? Yeah. You good at chess? I get, I get better every year after playing Dark Fest. Or playing at Dark Fest. Yeah. But it's like Adolf Silver is obsessed. Chaos is pretty good. Really? A couple of the boys are pretty good, so yeah. God, that's a cool that's a cool thing to have in your arsenal, I think, mm. playing chess. You just look smart. Yeah. You look less smart if you've got <laughs> coloured hair and with <laughs> yeah. a cock shaved. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um uh, Oh, interestingly. Sam Cards asked Barnicuts or Rose. So I'm off with Philps. Yeah, Barnicuts. All day. Philps is just a hail thing, maybe. Mm. Barnicuts, mate. Barnicuts. We'll get you on next time you come down. All right, Barnicuts. All right. I'm keen for it, actually. Yeah. I love pasty. It's good. Uh, what goes through your head approaching a 110 foot jump knowing you are going to flip it? That's from Riley Williamson 07. Mm, not a lot, really. You're just focused on what you're doing. You're not really yep. thinking. Are you thinking. You're not worried about if you left the um, oven on or anything like that. You're kind of quite focused on don't die. Yeah. And land on your tyres. Is it, yeah, or is it just, it's so in the moment. I imagine it's quite hard to just well, they, they compare it to anything. They classify it as the deep now, is how they do it in okay. the world of neuro, whatever it would be, brain stuff, is that you're that focused, like you would do anything. You're not, you would completely, like you could, run someone over and do like crazy things happen when people are in that, just in that state that you're just that focused nothing will get in like even when I'm at Joyride I don't hear the crowd yeah you're that focused you don't hear anything if that makes sense yeah yeah it com- makes complete sense but I, I'm, I'm just trying to think of an example of outside of what you do or what sp- within sports I'm trying to think of an example of how you would get there it's sort of, sort of why sports so mm. good isn't it how could you possibly recreate an approach to a 120 foot backflip or a joyride finals run mm. in anything other than those things? Yeah, it's, it's very niche. Like, is there like, if you're in a police chase, 
You know what yeah, I mean? It would, it'd be something like that, yeah. It would literally that where you want to be. Police chase, maybe in yeah. like a fighter, if you're fighter pilots. Yeah, and like soldier sort of stuff and they're getting... Yeah, so it's high stress. High stress, high reward, high consequences sort of situations, I guess. Just creates the big, the most focus. Yeah. And a focus that probably very few people really get to actually experience. Mm. I mean, I don't know. Would you consider yourself as like someone who likes adrenaline? Yes, I definitely do, yeah. Yeah, so you always seek up, it. Always up for pushing, pushing yeah. boundaries and see what I can get. In whatever it. you do. So if you're driving, you drive quick, like, like that sort of thing. You have problems with like... No, I've got a limiter on the van. I can do 62. <laughs> I did see the limiter sticker, yeah. <laughs> you put the limiter on. No, no. It's like having it, a, it, came, a me. it came with it when I bought it. <laughs> right. Because we don't have any motorways in, in Cornwall. Yeah. We're only allowed to do 60. Ah. Anyway. So it's like, cool, oh, you're only allowed to do down the road, eh? On a, on a dual carriageway. Right. You're only allowed to do 60. In a van. There on you the go. On the motorway, you're allowed to do 70. Right. But we don't have any motorways in Cornwall, so I can't get speeding tickets. Smart guy, huh? <laughs> See, how that, I mean, I think it's a good place to end, to be honest. <laughs> I, I can't keep asking you questions about your balls, but there you go. Even the guy who does the 120-foot backflip, he thinks about speeding tickets. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a certain brain. Yeah. Right? Mate, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. Thanks for fitting it in to your tight schedule. Uh, where can everyone find you? Where should they follow you? Uh, Instagram is Tom underscore Eistead. YouTube is Tom Eistead. I'm pretty sure it's on the same on that one. And that's the main ones you'll find me on. Nice one. Many thanks. You're the man. Uh, like and subscribe. Peace and love. It's weird not having Davey here. Yeah. I can't do you want to put, put a picture of a video on your face and logo here to subscribe and a picture on my face? Oh, see, he's, be he's better than me. Hey, man, what an episode that was. You did amazing in it. And so did you. You shone like a star. You shone like a moon. I shone like a focus spring deal. Oh, yeah, beautiful good. transition. Right, I've got a question for you, David, to kick this final advert off. Yeah. What would you do with up to 400 euros yeah. if you got it back when buying a bike? Ooh, I could stay in the bike shop and spend my 400 euros on accessories. Good point. Support your local bike shop. Great point. I could take the 400 euros and go to another shop close by, maybe buy 400 euros of pasta, maybe go to the euro Here's store, get 400 euros and just, that's Christmas done for eternity. True. Just keep handing them out Lottery every year. Lottery tickets. Yeah, beans. Tyres. Um, Chamois cream. A new pet. A new pet. <laughs> Perhaps a water dragon or an iguana. <laughs> yeah. Lovely idea. Well, Focus are actually making that question a reality. Nice. Because with the Focus Spring deals, mm -hmm. you can grab up to 400 euros back when buying a new bike. If you want to find out more, check out the terms and conditions and all of the details in the link. We're going to put that below and I'm also going to read it out. Please. Okay, are you ready for me to read it out? Yes, I'm This is old school in it, reading out links. Yeah, anticipation. I'm going to do it anyway. Please do I'm it. I'm doing it. I want the deal. Ride.focus.bikes forward slash Spring Deals TRC. Ooh, nice. So that is ride.focus.bikes forward slash Spring Deals TRC. And let us know in the comments what you would do with 400 euros. Best answer wins a signed Odub hat. Oh, I like it. Good. All I've right. got hats. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm good okay. for that. Okay. Hey, can we also put something up here that you can click yep. on for the next episode? How about we put a subscribe up there in the middle? Yeah, love We're going to put a video we think that our uh, lovely companionship yep. will love yep. on your face. On oh, my face? Yeah. So and they on can't my, see me now. Gone. And on my face, another video that we think people will love. And thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please hit like and subscribe. You guys are the best. Peace and love.